there isn't a viewer submission form to read at the beginning of this Fixer Flop video, this is my PC. And I suppose I am a viewer in one sense of the word. I view my own videos occasionally. I view them when I edit them, so that counts, right? I just wanted to keep the title the same in case you're wondering, because someone always has to point it out. This system, if you saw in one of our previous videos, does not post. We built it with mostly new components, believe it or not, considering much of the hardware in here is actually quite old, but for whatever reason, it would not send a picture to a monitor. And so that's what we're gonna try to fix in this video. I will have the aforementioned video linked in the description if you wanna check it out before watching this one, which I encourage you to do, you at least get an idea for the components in here. I'm gonna run through specs very briefly in this video, but uh, all in all, I'm just pretty shocked that it didn't wanna power up from the get-go. It could be something very simple, it could not be, and I'm about as in the dark as all of you. I, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a BIOS issue, maybe it's uh, a graphics card issue, power supply related, who, who really knows? And I'm not even sure we're gonna be able to fix it, but we're going to give it our best shot. Are you ready? Stay with me. If you're sick of seeing that same Activate Windows watermark over and over, head on over to VIP SCD Key, where they have Windows 10 and 11 Pro OEM keys at a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say goodbye to the watermark. And be sure to use your offer code SKGS for that sweet discount. Hello there and welcome to Fix or Flop. If you're new, just know that everything you see us do in these videos is free of charge to the owners in question. I'm the owner of this rig, so it doesn't really apply in this case, but you get the idea. We don't charge for hardware, we don't charge for labor, and it's because of your viewership, your support, your comments, your subscriptions. All of that is such a huge help here at Fix or Flop. Thank you so much. I'm excited that we've been able to round out season four with this episode, and without sounding morbid, I also hope that we can continue this into season five and potentially even season six. I don't want systems to break, but if they do, I'm here to help. So if you live in or around Orlando, Florida, and you have a broken system that you'd like to have a chance fixed for free, be sure to click on the link in the video description. It will take you to a form you can fill out and uh, we'll try to get to you as soon as possible. Now on to this thing. Without sounding like a broken record, this build was assembled with fairly old hardware. The platform is extremely old, about uh, what, a decade or so old, actually a little older than that, really, if you consider the age of the CPU. It's a Core i7-980X which uh, well, debuted back in Q1 of 2010, an X58 motherboard is paired with it along with, uh, I think, 24 gigs in this case of DDR3. I threw in a somewhat time-relevant graphics card, an R9 290. This was used, purchased on eBay, although it did appear in fairly decent physical shape. Uh, and the case is a much newer case. This was a part of a brand deal we did with Antec. It's the Performance One Silent. And pretty much where we left off with this thing was the system turned on, uh, fans all spun, everything Everything looked healthy, but it refused to send a picture to a monitor, which I'm going to replicate for you right now. This motherboard's front panel connector is a bit odd, so we have to jump the two power pins here. You can see things power on, the LEDs are all lit, uh, fans are all spinning quite loud, mind you, including the front fans there, but we will not get anything on our screen. Of course, the focus is going to go completely whack because it's just a, a black screen, but uh, yeah, nothing here. Now we do have a DRAM LED illuminated here. That's this uh, this little red LED, but I'm not sure if that's normal or not. We also have a green LED illuminated at the base of the board, and this has a label of SB underscore power, which I think stands for Southbridge Power, although I could be wrong. I've triple checked all wiring, including the supplemental PCIe cables, the 24 pin, the 8 pin EPS uh, way back there, and just all the other peripheral things, including fan cables. I've also triple checked the power supply side of things. Everything is connected where it should be. All that and still a black screen, Still raging fans at like full speed, no other reaction from the system. Which means we need to go deeper. Now, if you recall from the earlier video, we did check the voltage of the original CMOS battery. It was reading below one volt, and this is supposed to be three. So we swapped it out for a brand new one, cleared the CMOS in the process, but still no fix. But that doesn't rule out a BIOS incompatibility. And while I couldn't find any concrete evidence online, it looks like this motherboard may need one. But that's gonna require a bit more work than I'm willing to do up front because uh, we don't have BIOS flashback capabilities in this motherboard. I have to remove the CPU cooler, which was a major pain in the butt to install install and then swap it with another CPU that I hope I have on hand, I'm not sure if I do, and then hope that that works and then boot into the BIOS and then update it that way. It, it's, I like to save the more complex stuff for later. Maybe it's 
RAM or graphics card related. Let's check those first. So this DDR3, to the best of my knowledge, was new when we bought it. Somehow we managed to find some new DDR3 DIMMs from Corsair. I'm going to remove all of them and install a single known and working DDR3 module from my own stash. All six of these DIMMs, by the way, physically look okay, at least what little I can see of each board. Maybe a single known working Crucial Ballistic Sport DDR3 DIMM will do the trick. But unfortunately, after powering on, still no signal to our monitor and we still have an illuminated DRAM LED. I'm gonna ignore this for now. I think this just means that, uh, well, early checks are okay. We also have an illuminated CPU LED and see right next to that innermost DIMM slot. So. Um, I think that's just telling us that they're, they're getting power. Now we're going to remove the graphics card. This uh, order of operations might seem a bit weird, a bit unorthodox for a you know, traditional PC troubleshooter. I'm trying my best to avoid what I think is the obvious culprit, that being the BIOS incompatibility. Again, for reasons I already discussed, it's just gonna be very intensive labor-wise to dive into all of that, remove the CPU, find another compatible chip, flash the BIOS, and then reassemble it all with this stinking annoying cooler. Um, it's looking like that's what could be the case. Although we did buy this R9290 used. It's in good shape, but it is possible. This is the reason we're not getting picture out because it all has to run through this card in the end. For now though, we've got our trusty XFX low power graphics card in here. No discrete power needed and we know this works. So uh, let's see if we get a picture now. I'd say we've roughly a 50-50 shot of this working. Uh, you know, the graphics card is kind of that last line of defense before you actually do get something on your screen. It all has to run through here. So it very well could fix it, but that BIOS is still, uh, it's still in the back of my mind. It doesn't sound like we're getting anywhere because the fan curve is still pretty much just full blast. Yeah. That really sucks. Meanwhile. I don't know why I didn't think of this any sooner, but checking the motherboard vendor's page, even for a motherboard as old as this X58 Sabertooth is the one-stop shop for verifying BIOS compatibilities with certain CPUs. And sure enough, every single Core i7 900 series chip from the Core i7 920 up to the Core i7 Extreme 990X was supported by the original manufacture date of this board, which means that from this board's inception, it will work with any of these chips right out of the box. There should be no need for any BIOS update of any kind, which means we now have a different problem on our hands than we initially thought. Uh, what else could it be? We've ruled out the graphics card. We've ruled out DDR3. We know the power supply works. The system turns on. It's a brand new power supply at that. We've ruled out the CMOS battery being an issue. We obviously know now the BIOS isn't the issue, so... Well, I mean, what, CPU mounting pressure? Maybe the cooler's not installed correctly, or maybe the CPU is bad? I hope that's not the case. Maybe the motherboard is bad. Even though these are brand new, they could still degrade in theory. I do have a Core i7-920, the cheapest of the CPUs that is supported by this X58 board, according to their site. And uh, while this is gonna be our last resort, if this doesn't work, it's, it's likely the motherboard which would be unfortunate. I mean, at this point, it's gotta be either the CPU or the motherboard, right? I can't think of it being anything else. Everything's wired correctly. <sighs> What's going on? I've tried every available DRAM slot. I've tried disconnecting all non-vitals just to be sure I haven't miswired something because, well, that's always a possibility with these older boards. I think I'm just in denial at this point. Let's get the platform back out and swap the CPU. I really regret tightening this as much as I did. This is just the stupidest way to install a cooler, and now we've got to do it all over again. And while we're swapping this chip out, we'll take the time to inspect the underside of the chip just to make sure that uh, everything is clean. We'll also check the pins, make sure I didn't bend anything when installing this. I'd be surprised if I did. You know, this isn't my first rodeo, but uh, it's happened before. So let's see, still looks pretty much brand new under here. And so does the socket. Um, yeah, just a little bit of thermal paste there. Uh, actually, there is one spot right at the top. I don't know how this little pin is angled, but it doesn't look right. Looks like it's pushed down and maybe to the left, probably still making good contact, but we're gonna correct it because, well, it shouldn't be this way. I like to use sewing needles for these kinds of jobs. They're very fine pointed, of course, and you can be very precise with your movements. The last thing you wanna do is break off one of these uh, little pins. They are 
very small, very sensitive, and just need a little bit of finesse. 12 o'clock midnight. This is about as good as I could reasonably get it without applying a ton of force and uh, risking the pin breaking. So we're gonna try this again with the original chip, the 980X. It might work now, but we're going to test it outside of the case first. I'm not gonna reassemble all this and risk uh, having to do it all over again since it's possible that bend pin wasn't the real problem. So uh, here we go. I also don't have a cooler atop the CP. We're not gonna leave it on long enough for that to even matter. I just wanna see if we can uh, yeah, get a sign of life from the system. Here we go. All right, so that is on. The chip's getting hot fast, which is good. That's a good sign, it means it's getting power. LED over the graphics card. Oh, that works, that works. <laughs> There's no way. I cannot believe. I sabotage the build. I, I just, hubris. I did not think it was something I did. I, I'm shocked. I suppose from one angle, I'm really not shocked. I've done worse before, but man, I, I just, I can't believe I trashed the socket. I, I've installed so many CPUs over the years. I, I don't think I've ever done that before. I'm just gonna go full beans here, reinstall everything that was originally intended to go in this system, including the 24 gigs of DDR3, and uh, we'll try powering it on one more time in hopes that this actually works now. We just have to hope now that nothing else is wrong with the rig. You know, concurrent uh, issues that are unrelated to each other are the most difficult to troubleshoot. Here we go then. It's a mess. Uh, please ignore that. Power on here. We're gonna manually jump at the bottom. Here we go. Hoping for something. The fans are still like full blast, which is slightly concerning. I'm hoping they cool down a bit. Please cool down a bit. Whoa, there it is. <laughs> it works. We definitely need to tweak these fan curves. They are so loud, but that's a post. I can't believe I bricked my own system. But there it is, loading straight into Windows with the SSD we attached, already had Windows on it. Uh, boots straight up, no issues within about 10 or so seconds, which is fantastic for a system this old. I'm, I'm really happy, and I now want to run just a couple of benchmarks to make sure things are A-OK. -okay. This first check obviously isn't a benchmark, but uh, we are in the BIOS, and you can see that our CPU temps look perfectly fine, 35 degrees Celsius, although that shouldn't be much of a surprise since our fans are running at full speed. Speaking of, I've changed these fan profiles to silent, hoping that sticks. I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't, though. Especially considering some of these four-pin fans are connected to three-pin headers. We're gonna get voltage control, and uh, sometimes that mix-up is a bit dicey. Wow, that actually did work. Now the front fans are still a bit finicky. In fact, one of these is plugged into the power fan header, which means it's pretty much going to be running at full speed the entire time. I'm going to disconnect those, leave the rear fans, including the CPU fans uh, and the exhaust fan on though, and we'll keep the left side panel off to ensure nothing gets too hot. I'm really worried about the graphics card. The R9 290 has been known to run a bit toasty. Starting first with 3D Mark Fire Strike. This is a 1080p synthetic, and we're only scoring better than 36% of all submitted results here, which is a bit shocking, I will admit, considering our CPU at the time was one of the best consumer grade chips you could buy, and the R9 290 was no slouch when it came out. It's, um, yeah, just a, a bit of a letdown that we didn't perform any better than this. This being the older benchmark, not a lot of newer builds are even running this, let alone storing their scores into the database, but we'll take it. Overall, you'll see the playback here is fairly smooth, and the CPU actually does quite well, keeping up with the graphics card in this regard. The physics test actually performed quite well, and the scores are almost identical, suggesting that there's no real bottleneck here in at least a balanced title. Next up on the list was either a third or a first-person shooter, and I chose PUBG because, well, it's not a recent Battle Royale release. It's actually quite old. It was very popular several years ago, and it's not super graphically demanding, especially in the lower presets. So I chose medium, hoping that we could pull something off in 1080p, and sure enough, we're averaging actually consistently over 60 FPS, sometimes as high as 80 or even 100, depending on the scene where we're looking, and uh, overall, no stutters, nothing to complain about. Playback was actually fairly enjoyable. I'd be perfectly fine playing PUBG consistently 
on this machine. Just ignore how absolutely trash I am at this game. Lastly then, changing paces to an off-road driving simulator, this is Dirt 5, a slightly newer title, also being run in the 1080p medium preset, but we ran into an issue right out of the gate. See, this card only has a four gig frame buffer, and well, you can see up top there, we're pretty much maxing that out, which of course will affect our frame rate. The game let us know of this, and uh, well, I just ignored it. I think that 1080p medium is fine here. I think that the frame rate's actually fine as well. If you can keep up somewhere between 50 and 60 FPS with no significant frame time spikes, you should be a-okay. Now, if you want 120 or higher, you're definitely gonna have to revamp your hardware or drop your resolution to something you probably won't like. Wow, we used to call this card the leaf blower back in the day, and uh, well, this is why. Under load, it sounds pretty loud. I know you're probably wondering why on earth I'm including gaming benchmarks in a fix or flop video. It's because we couldn't include them in the original build video. And uh, also was just curious about the stability of the system. It overall seems to be running fine. The temperatures are a bit toasty, especially in the graphics card side of things, but that is nothing new, nothing surprising. We did run things with the side panel off, so I expect they'll go up a few degrees when we do throw that on. But otherwise, very happy with the way the system performed. It's also not as loud as I thought it would be, but well, it's loud, but this is a silent case, so that helps. So at the end of the day, the only reason this video exists is because of my own negligence. I have installed so many CPUs and I don't think I've ever once damaged the socket like I have here. LGA 1366, a socket type that we don't usually work with. And there I, I went and had to Screw it all up for you guys. So I'm very sorry that I left you on a cliffhanger in the last video. Again, that's linked below if you have no idea what I'm talking about, but I am glad that we were able to finally get it up and running and we were able to stretch its legs a bit. I could show you just a couple games, also the synthetic. I'm gonna give you an idea of what the throwback PC is truly capable of. You know, I've gotta say the R9 290, that one really hits home because for me, that card was, uh, well, it was a bit infamous, right? It was a, a powerful card, but it ran extremely hot and it ran extremely loud. There weren't many options apart from this little reference blower style design. And uh, so you just kind of had to deal with it if you wanted powerful from AMD. And uh, this came out a little before, I think I started building custom PCs myself. And the channel came out around 2015. We started consistently uploading around 2016. So I'm just all over this at the time. And uh, I've got to say, shout out to the eBay seller because they kept this thing super clean. It didn't artifact. It didn't give us any issues beyond what we would normally expect from an R9 290 blower. And as for the platform, DDR3 aside, Hank, if you are watching again, huge shout out for letting us borrow your motherboard and CPU. I cannot fathom how you purchased these and didn't manage to build with them. Hank loves building PCs. I know most of you don't know who Hank is, but uh, he's an avid PC builder and seller in the Tampa, Florida area. And uh, he had these laying around. He never assembled anything with them and just said, hey, if you want to make a video on them, be my guest. So I couldn't pass that up. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, little blast from the past here. Again, thanks to Hank. And uh, a bit of sleuthing for the other hardware case and power supply aside to make this a true throwback rig. Oh, and of course, I cannot end the video without again mentioning how grateful I am to all of you for supporting the Fixer Flop playlist so far. What an epic way to end the season. And I promise you season five is going to be even better. We've got plans to really revamp it, to, to liven it up a bit. I think it will be worth the wait. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for learning with me.